But for the real family entertainment, at its most sublime, you'll have to wait till after Christmas when Star Wars opens in London. Even by the standards of Hollywood, a place where nothing succeeds like excess, Star Wars is a phenomenon. It only opened in America at the end of May, but already it's the biggest box office hit in cinema history, having grossed the best part of $200 million in the United States alone. Perhaps one important reason for this immense popularity is that it somehow combines elements of all the best-loved themes of romantic adventure, from the Arabian Nights to the Western, from the Knights of the Round Table to science fiction and space fantasy. Alec Guinness, as a sort of elderly space age Sir Galahad, is the best-known actor in the film, the juvenile leads being played by Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, and Eddie Fisher's daughter Carrie as the kidnapped princess. But the real stars, I fancy, will turn out to be two robots, known as C-3PO and R2-D2. Ironically enough, Star Wars was turned down by two studios before 20th Century Fox agreed to back it without too much initial enthusiasm and with a comparatively modest budget of £6 million. Even more ironically, most of the spectacular sets and the live action scenes, which are about half the strength of the picture, were created by British technicians at Elstree Studios. But of course, none of the monstrous profits will come back to support our own local film industry. In fact, the overwhelming success of the picture surprised everybody, including Fox, the producer Gary Kurtz and the director George Lucas. Had they been able to predict it, we should already be inundated with commercial spin-offs such as toy models of R2-D2 and C-3PO. They won't be here in time for Christmas, but ray guns, spaceships, t-shirts, posters and Star Wars wallpaper, bubble baths and breakfast foods should be on the market pretty soon. As one Fox executive put it, it's not so much a film, it's more an industry. And the man chiefly responsible for both film and, by extension, industry is the writer and director George Lucas, who spent years writing and rewriting the script until he felt it was good enough to go into production. And the script, which is like everyone's nostalgic memory of glorious Saturday morning matinees, is quite as important to the overall film as the special effects. George Lucas is best known, or was until now, for American graffiti, but I suppose the initial seed of Star Wars was sown in his first picture, a science fiction story called THX 1138 made when he was a 27-year-old graduate of film school. It's really quite irritating to think that even while he was making that picture, George Lucas was already mulling over ideas for Star Wars. And now five years, and only two films later, at the age of 32, he's so rich he need never work again. Oh, well, it's no good being jealous. He's a good director and deserves his success. Damn him.